Hello there. I have a lesson here that's going to show us what a zero exponent means and what negative exponents mean. Uh, before we get to that, I have a, a little example here that's going to help us later on with understanding that, that zero exponent. So what I want us to do is I want us to, to calculate the volume of the two cubes. So the first one, number one, I need the volume of, I'm going to call it the little cube. Now remember to find volume of a cube, we take base, or the, the area of the base times the height. Well, the area of the base is going to be 2n times 2n, but then we have to multiply that by the height, which is 2n. And when we take 2n times 2n times 2n, I focus first on the 2s. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then n times n times n is n to the third using the product of powers rule. So there's the volume of the, of the little one. Now let's find the volume of the big one. Well, that one's going to be area of the base is 4n times 4n. And then we have to multiply that by the height of the cube, which is 4n. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. n times n times n is n to the third. So we found the volumes of the two. And now it wants to know how many times larger is the volume of the bigger cube than that of the smaller cube. Well, to do that, we're going to need to take the volume of the first one, or not, I shouldn't say the first one, of the larger cube. And the volume of the larger cube was four or 64 n to the third. And then we're going to have to divide that by the volume of the smaller cube, which is 8n to the third. And now we just have to simplify. Well, if we look at this, 64 divided by 8, that equals 8. And then the next part, we have n to the third divided by n to the third. Well, if I have a number divided by itself, that just equals 1, so n to the third divided by n to the third, both of those become 1, and my final answer is 8. So the volume of the larger cube is 8 times bigger than the volume of the smaller cube. And we're going to come back to this uh, in just a little bit. Now, my next one is just remembering how exponents work. So if I look at this 2 to the third, answer to that is 8. 2 to the second, the answer is 4. 2 to the first, the answer is 2. 2 to the 0. That's what I want you to sit and ponder for a little bit. What do you think 2 to the 0 actually equals? And as you're thinking about that, I'm going to run through this in 3 to the 3rd. We're going to get 27. 3 to the 2nd is 9. 3 to the 1st is 3rd. And now we're back to this 3 to the 0. What does that equal? You think about that as I now move on to 5 to the 3rd. Well, 5 to the 3rd is 125. 5 to the 2nd is 25, 5 to the 1st is 5, and now we're back to this 5 to the 0. What do you think that equals? Some of you may have figured this out already. Some of you are still trying to figure it out, and that's okay. What I want you to, to recognize in these, if I look at my 2's raised to a power, and now I go from 2 to the 3rd to 2 to the 2nd, well, I just divided by 2, didn't I? 8 divided by 2 is 4. Or if I come here from 4 to 2, I divided by 2 again. So if I'm going to go from 2 to the 1st to 2 to the 0, I'm just going to divide by 2 again. And if I divide by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So it looks like 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1, and it is. Well, bring us back over here to the, the 3 raised to a power. Same concept. If I go from 27 to 9, or from 3 to the 3rd to 3 to the 2nd, I just divide it by 3. To go from 3 to the 2nd to 3 to the 1st, or 9 to 3, again, I divide it by 3. So then to go from 3 to the 1st to 3 to the 0, what do we do? Well, we divide by 3, and we get 1. So 3 to the 0 is 1. Well, what do you think 5 to the 0 is going to be? Same concept. To go from 125 to 25, or 5 to the 3rd to 5 to the 2nd, we divide by 5. Go from 5 to the 2nd to 5 to the 1st, we divide by 5. So to go from 5 to the 1st to 5 to the 0, we're going to divide by 5, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we have figured out what a number raised to the 0 power is. It appears to be 1. Now, as we continue on, I'd go, well, what's 2 to the negative 1? That's something that we've never seen before, negative exponent. Well, look at the pattern we have going on here. We're still going to continue this pattern. All my exponents, when I was up here, I had an exponent of 3. 
Well, I divided by 2 to get to an exponent of 2. I divided by 2 again to get an exponent of 1. I divided by 2 again to get an exponent of 0. So if I'm going to go from 0 to negative 1, I'm still going to divide by 2. Well, what's 1 divided by 2? Now, some of you are going to say 0.5, which is not wrong. I'm going to look at it in fraction format, and I'm going to look at it as it's 1 half. If I want to go down again now to get to 2 to the negative second, I'm going to divide by 2 again. Well, now I'm going to be at 1 fourth, because 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. And to get to 2 to the negative third, again, I'm going to divide by 2 again, and now I'm going to be at 1 eighth. But now look at this. If you ignore the negative sign on this very last example here, well, it's 2 to the third. 2 to the third was 8. If you ignore the negative sign on this example, 2 to the second was 4. Notice the denominator. If I ignore the negative sign on this one, 2 to the first is 2. Look at the denominator. So we've got this little pattern going on that we can apply here. So if I look at 3 to the negative 1, I first think of, well, what's 3 to the first? Well, it's 3. But now notice, if we go back to our problem over here, that 2 went to the denominator. So in this example, I'm going to have to have my 3 go to the denominator. So it's going to be 3 to the first. Or if I continue to divide by 3, you know, I'd look up here and go, if I divide by 3, well, that's going to fall into place, yeah. I'm going to be at 1 third. And I continue on. Now I'm going to be, well, 3 to the second is 9, so I'm going to have 1 9. 3 to the third is 27, so this is going to be 1 27. And so on and so forth over here. 5 to the negative 1, 1 over 5. 5 to the negative second, 1 over 25. And 5 to the negative third is 1 over 125. Now, the reason I did all that is because I'm showing you the first one. It was the zero exponent rule. Think of what was 2 to the 0, 3 to the 0, 5 to the 0. Everything equaled 1. So anything raised to the 0 power is 1 unless it's 0 to the 0. We can't do 0 to the 0. But every other number raised to the 0 power equals 1. And then the next thing we did was the negative exponent rule. And in the negative exponent rule, think of our 2 to the second, or excuse me, not 2 to the second, 2 to the negative first became 1 half. Or 5 to the negative third was 1 over really 5 to the third, or 125. So when we do that, our a to the negative 1, we just flip it over, and the a to the n now is in the denominator. Notice the exponent's positive. Or if the exponent is negative in the denominator, well, again, we can flip it. And then that a to the positive n is going to be in the numerator. So I have these kind of two little steps to change the sign on an exponent, like we did in this one and this one. So what we need to do is we need to take the reciprocal of the base. So in my first example here, well, really my base is a over 1. So I just flip that over, and now it's 1 over a. And in the second one, well, my base is, think of it as 1 over a, so I flip it, and now it's a over 1. So we take the reciprocal of the base, and then once you've taken the reciprocal of the base, now that's where you're going to change the sign on the exponent. So if it was a negative exponent, it now becomes positive. If you flipped your base and the exponent was positive, well, now you're going to change it to a negative. So flip the base and then change the sign on your exponent. So those are our two little rules that we're going to use. The zero exponent rule just says anything to the zero power is 1. And the negative exponent rule says if we flip the base, then we change the sign on the exponent. So let's look at some examples using this. I want to take my expressions, and I want them to be new expressions with only positive exponents. So this first one, I notice I have g to the negative fifth. Well, I have to take that g then, and I have to flip it into the denominator. So my g is going to go to the denominator. And remember, when we flip it, the exponent changes signs. So that's going to be a 5. The 3, well, 3 is in the denominator. It has a positive exponent of 1 on it. So it's just going to stay in the denominator. Well, now, since there's some would think nothing in the numerator, there's still, remember, that 1 there. And my final answer is now 1 over 3g to the fifth. In my second example, the 8 has a positive exponent, and that's going to stay in the numerator. The h, on the other hand, 
that has a negative exponent on it. So this part has to flip. The h is going to go into the numerator. And now my exponent is going to become a positive one, and therefore I don't have to write it. So 8h would be my final answer to that one. Maybe I'll box it in so that we know that that's our final one. And then my orange one here, there's a lot going on in this one. Let's just start with that fraction bar. Maybe we won't need it in the end, but I'm going to put it there. So I'm going to start with the j, j to the negative third. Well, that's going to take the j, put it into the denominator, change the sign then, so you become positive 3. k to the negative 6, well, negative exponent. I'm going to flip the base, so the k is going to flip up to the numerator, and then the exponent changes signs. And m to the second, I'm going to leave that in the denominator because it's already positive, and I want a positive exponent. There we go. I have simplified that one. Now my next one, I have a really big number, but notice it's raised to the zero power. What's anything raised to the zero power? That's right, it's one. Very quickly. Anything to the zero power is one. All right, now, what happens when I have a fraction raised to the negative one power? Well, same thing as before, we're going to take the, the base. Now, in this case, the base is one-third. Remember, we need to take the reciprocal of it. What's the reciprocal of one-third? It is three. So now I have three to the first power, but since it's a one, we don't need that. And there we go. Now in this one, I have, I have A's, B's, and C's in the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to use the quotient of powers rules as well as keeping my exponents positive. So I'm going to start off with my A's. I have a to the third over a to the sixth. I could take the three minus six, but then I'm going to have a to the negative third in the numerator. I don't really want that. Since I want positive exponents, I'm going to start with the bigger exponent, which is the six, and I'm going to subtract the three. Six minus three is three. Since I started in the, num or in the denominator, my answer is going to end up in the denominators with a to the third. Then I'm going to go to my b's. So I have b to the second over b to the first. There are more b's in the numerator, so then I'm going to go 2 minus the 1 from the denominator's exponent. 2 minus 1 is 1. I have b to the first in the numerator. And then last but not least, I have my c's. Now this, again, I look at which one has the larger exponent. Some people look at the 5 and go, that's bigger. But remember, it's a negative 5. So this 1 that's there is actually larger. So I'm going to take the 1 from the numerator's exponent subtract the negative 5. 1 minus negative 5 is 6, because 1 minus a negative 5 is like adding 5. So now I have BC to the 6th all over A to the 3rd, and there is my final answer to that problem. Uh, my next one, this, some people would want to use their calculator and figure out what's 4 to the 7th, or they'd, they'd multiply 4 7 times in their head to figure that out. Uh, I don't get, I'm not real good at when it gets that big. So I would look at this, and I'm going to go this way first. I'm going to go, what's 4 to the 7th times 4 to the negative 5th? Thinking about, about the product of powers rule, I can add those exponents because my bases are the same. 7 plus negative 5 is 2. So that part is going to give me 4 to the second power over, well, 4 to the first power, or excuse me, 4 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Well, now it's just, what's 4 to the second power? 4 to the second power, in the end, turns out to be 16 over 1, and that's just 16. And then last but not least, I have one that, that's got quite a bit going on in it. Uh, there's multiple ways of going about simplifying this, and you just have to find that way that works best for you. What I'm going to do in mine is I'm going to start off by, I'm going to go this route. I'm going to multiply all of my numerators together. Since I have a fraction times a fraction, I can multiply my numerators, and then I'm going to multiply my denominators, and then I'll simplify from there. So numerator, I see that... 6 is the only number, and then only coefficient. And then I'm going to go on to the m's. So now I have m to the negative 6 times m to the 3rd. 
There we're going to use the product of powers rules and we'll add those exponents. So I'm going to end up with m to the negative third. And then I have, well, n to the zero. We know that anything to the zero power is just one, so times one. And I'm left with six m to the negative third in my numerator. Now I'm going to move on to the denominator. Uh, 15 is my coefficient. Uh, and then I'm going to have, go to m, m to the second times m to the negative 5. Well, that's going to put me at, if I add those together, remember, I'm going to end up m to the negative third. And then I'll go to the n's. I have n to the fourth times n to the negative seventh. Add those together, and I'm going to get n to the negative third. And now I have to work on simplifying this part. First thing I look at is my, my con or not my constants, my coefficients, the 6 and the 15. I notice those are both divisible by 3. So the 6 is going to become 2. The 15 is going to become 5. I'm going to have 2 in my numerator. I'm going to have a 5 in my denominator. My m's, well, notice I have m to the negative third over m to the negative third. It's the exact same number, and the number divided by itself is 1. So those are going to divide out, become 1. You could also take the approach of subtracting exponents. Negative 3 minus the negative 3 is 0. So we'd have m to the 0, which again is still 1. We don't need to write it down. And then I have my n to the negative third. I look at that piece, and I want that to be a positive exponent. Therefore, I'm going to have to flip that n up to the numerator, change the sign on it, becomes 3. So when it's all said and done, I have 2n to the third over 5 as my final answer to that problem. And that's going to conclude my lesson on zero exponents and negative exponents.